So I think that we can already say that this whole deck is going to, it's going to bring a different perspective than the traditional tarot. It's going to give you a little bit of different meaning for the cards. Definitely when we get to the minor arcana, since they're mostly animal guides. Next we have the tower, which is just beautiful destruction. Happy little octopus family. <laughs> the octopus is wearing little, little glasses. <laughs> That's pretty cute. Hey everybody, welcome to my first ever video for my witchy YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to be unboxing my Ostara tarot deck, which is a brand new tarot deck that I got. I haven't looked at it yet. I figured we could alternate between tarot deck flip throughs on this channel because I have about 30 decks we could go through. So to start with, we're going to be unboxing this, uh, oh man, the green screen is really killing everything. Ostara tarot deck. So this is a tarot deck that's by four different authors. I got this from Amazon. I'd been eyeballing it for a while and I actually did get this right around Ostara this year. The Vernal Equinox Ostara wakes the city after winter. Through 78 stunning tarot cards with an accompanying guidebook, delve into the fantastical world of traditional symbolism and contemporary themes that will return you to the wilderness and explore the feminine. With the unique synergy of artistic styles and perspectives, discover deities and mystical archetypes in the major arcana that convey 22 core lessons, while the miners help employ the help of animal guides to illuminate their diverse messages, connecting them to your life. Identify your relationship with the earth and pay homage to the natural world and those romantic moments where you can again be part of the nature around you. Use keywords as well as upright and reverse card explanations to manifest your deepest spiritual renewal. Perfect for both novices and collectors. And I like this one because on the edges of the box, so it doesn't really matter how you prop this up on your shelf except for this side. Um, it all looks very nice. And it's got this little red tag here. Oh, I guess the magnet is just really strong. Very strong magnet. So it looks like on the front they have like symbols to represent them. Probably cards that are in this deck and inside we actually get to see little pictures of them. Molly, Eden, Krista, and Julia. Inside we have this nice beautiful color guidebook a nice size guidebook as you can see here and here we already are getting started with some of the beautiful artwork we have a preface major arcana section minor broken down into the four suits and then information about the artist i'm not going to show every single page or flip through every section because we're going to look at the cards together but i do want to just kind of show how the book breaks it down guidebooks are one of my favorite parts of getting tarot decks because one thing that i like about is that it gives me keywords so if i don't want to sit here and read paragraphs to try and understand the card i just need like a refresher of what this card is about just a really quick like oh yeah this one's about beginnings and innocence then i can just grab the keywords really quick to give you an example we'll take a look at the fool together. Beginnings, innocence, trust, and freedom. A girl rides her broomstick through a sky filled with birds, getting dangerously close to the sun. The fool is shown at the beginning of her journey, symbolizing unlimited potential. This card tells us that each day is an adventure. The fool upright in a reading tells us that now is the time to be foolhardy and set out on a new adventure without worrying too much about consequences. It is easy to hum and haw about the dangers of living without ever actually going for what we want. This card tells you to trust and enjoy life and that we will only grow through experience. And the reverse meaning here says the fool in reverse cautions us about disregarding the consequences of our actions. We may find ourselves wanting to be free and reckless while actually doing real harm to ourselves and others. Be prepared for the challenges that lay ahead. There is a time to be brave and spontaneous and a time to be consistent and reliable. Knowing the difference is your challenge. So let me take a look at like a minor arcana. Oh, wow. All of the minor suits are animals. That's really, okay, we'll, we'll find that out when we get there. But eight green-leafed wands emerge from the heart of the peregrine falcon. The eight wands signify freedom and space. Unburdened by previous challenges, full of energy. It's about speed. Be very busy and efficient. Significant delays. Yeah, that looks like a really decent guidebook. It looks like it would be a really good referral tool to have on hand. For any deck, well, I don't know about any deck because they do have very unique drawings and they are referencing the specific symbols in their unique representation of the cards. So I don't know how well this would be able to apply to other tarot decks besides the Ostara. Okay, setting the book aside, let's go ahead and take a look at the cards. So it does have one of those little, little things in here to keep the cards in place. And let's pull them out and we're just going to kind of flip through and do a little first impressions of this deck. We might stop and talk about some in depth and we might not. 
I might pull some out. Oh, I did not know the deck is holographic on the side. I didn't realize that. I'm going to set the box away. And put the past away. I wish you would step back from the ledge, my friend. Just kidding. The back is gorgeous. Look at the back of these cards. So starting first, the deck is fairly stiff. I don't know how well I would be able, I'm not actually going to shuffle yet because I want to flip through an order. Yeah, this is going to be a difficult deck to riffle shuffle. Most holographic decks are, and I'm very like, I'm always very, ooh, I don't want to mess this up because it's holographic. This makes you feel real fancy. All right, so let's go ahead and start here with the Fool. I don't necessarily get the impression that she's starting a journey. The art is beautiful. This is going to be a beautiful, gosh, and you can kind of tell the difference between some of the artists because there's four different artists that have worked on this. So you're going to be able to kind of tell which artist did which card, which I think is really cool. I don't get the impression that she's starting a journey. It almost feels like she's on an uphill battle. This this brings out a little bit of a different message to me than the, the typical or the traditional fool. So I think that we can already say that this whole deck is going to, it's going to bring a different perspective than the traditional tarot. It's going to give you a little bit of different meaning for the cards. Definitely when we get to the minor arcana, since they're mostly animal guides. Okay, the magician... We have a character with eyes on their hands. I like that we have this little boat. So it almost implies a journey here, but like a journey within because we're going up towards the mind. I like the snail imagery too with the spirals surrounded by cards. This is very cool. Very esoteric feeling. Next, we have the high priestess holding. It looks like a heart. What do y'all think that is? A vase, a heart, a pomegranate. We've got a lot of moon symbolism. She's very moth-like too. She's got little moth antlers coming out of her head. I think the art is pretty, but I don't know that I would say this is very good for beginners. This card here doesn't really help you to understand like the deep subconscious nature of the High Priestess. I wouldn't say this would be a good beginner deck, but this could be a nice second or third deck for sure after you get the hang of the traditional archetype symbolism of the cards. Next we have the Empress. And while it's lacking in like the pregnancy symbolism that's typically there on or like the, you know, the mother kind of imagery of the Empress, it does have a nesting bird and it has a flower growing from her hand. So we still do get that like re like new birth and nesting nurturing feeling of a mama bird. So it still kind of gets that across. And from these first four cards, I love the earth tones in this. We've got like slightly desaturated greens with like nice earthy browns and reddish which is really like a color palette that I'm into lately. So next we have the emperor. And again, he does have like the Aries symbol with the um, ram horns, but like with the tattoos and stuff on him, I, I wouldn't get, unless I already knew the card, I wouldn't really understand intuitively what to make of this card, that it was structure um, and control and things like that. Unless I knew a bit about astrology to pull from the Aries. Gorgeous artwork though. I think I'm gonna say that through the whole thing. Hierophant. That's just a really cool looking card. I actually, I really like this one. Uh, we've got the stairs going upwards with the books implying that it's like lessons learned or learned language, but there's a light. So like lighting the path. Plus there's growth coming out ahead. This is a really, really cool. I, this might be one of my favorites so far, which I don't normally like the Hierophant. The Hierophant is actually one of my least favorite cards. So next we have the Lovers, which is beautiful. This is gorgeous. Nice, uh, passionate reds and oranges. Candles growing, um, implying that the, the passion has been burning for a while. This is like a well-established love or passion which is a little contrary to what I feel like the lovers is because the lovers feels like a choice, like the start of loving something. So this feels like it's a little bit more like settled. Next, we have the chariot. This one's pretty good. We've got someone carrying, holding two reins with horses pointed in the opposite directions with the black and white. So I do, that, that's pretty solid for the, the chariot symbolism. We've got the wheels in the background too. Definitely a feeling of balance. The black and white checkerboard at the bottom. Then we have justice. This is a beautiful card. Oh, is the heart heavier than a feather? That's great. That's excellent. Next, we have the hermit. And this one's a little soft, I guess is the word I want to use for this. Um, we've got the hermit standing here in the night with the moon rising behind him. I can't exactly tell what this is that's coming down right here. I don't know what that's supposed to be. I mean, it kind of looks like a snake to me. We've got mushrooms going, growing at the bottom, bats hanging up here in the corner. 
in the snow and the cold, but bundled up and prepared with his lantern lighting the way. But the winter imagery is not one that I'm used to seeing associated with it, but it, it feels right. Next, we have the Wheel of Fortune. I actually like this. At first, I was like, I don't feel like it, but the more you look at it, the more interesting it gets because we've got the one at the bottom playing the cat's cradle with the string. And then we've got the one at the top that's cutting the thread. So it's like the threads of fate. I think like that's a, an old myth. Greek or Roman, someone will have to correct me in the comments, but the three sisters of fate or whatever with the light in the middle and it's split into the eight sides. So it does kind of feel like anything could happen. Fate is in control more than anything. Next we have strength. This one looks pretty nice. She's holding a dragon head, petting him. She's got her heart in one hand. Oh, I do like this. With the moon and the sun on each shoulder, one eye covered. It does kind of imply that she's she's hardened, she's been through some stuff, and she's got a protector. She knows how to protect herself. There's a big feeling of balance here, but almost like a little... I mean, th this one actually makes me think a little differently about the strength card, which is one of my favorite tarot cards, that, you have to, that, that you've had to learn how to protect your heart. You've got this like defense system around you, the lion or the, the uh, dragon in this one, this ferocious protector that you've had to learn to control, and it's to protect your own heart or... Or maybe this is even like she's revealing her heart. She's put the dragon down. She's she's calmed the dragon so that she can reveal her feelings. That's a very... I really like this one. The strength card is really good. Hangs Man. Beautiful Goldens. Oh, the creepy pumpkins at the bottom. Kind of give this card more of a feeling of despair than I typically see put in the Hanged Man card. This does kind of feel like you're feeling stuck in the moment. I like the symbols on the tree over here. Kind of make me feel like seasons are passing or... This is a change of time. Oh, we've got sleeping wolves at the bottom too. Next we have the death card. And this is, I think this is the same artist. This might be my favorite artist in the deck. Um, I think that these two, the magician and the death card are done. And then I think the, the hierophant. Yeah, this has got to be the same artist. Um, and the wheel of fortune card. I feel like this is the same artist. I love that. They are they are probably my favorite artist in this deck. I love the the kind of abstract feeling of it. Definitely a bit of chaos, but I do love the color palettes too. So death card we're seeing like vines coming out of this uh bird skull. Blood drops coming, severed hands. We see a lot of like bones and stuff. It does feel like death and decay. Next we have the temperance card. And temperance is um, interesting. We've got some animals flowing from the bottom, some animals flowing from the top. It does kind of feel like letting things flow, letting things free. It does kind of feel like a little bit of a loosening up, letting go, uh, allowing things have been bottled up for too long. The devil card, again, this is very gorgeous art. I love this. We've got the two characters trapped in his hands. The beautiful like wings coming out of the back, the deep reds of the jacket, the hands severed. But it also implies like look how many look how many creatures he has trapped. This feels trapped more than anything. And again, like trapped by something sort of out of your control. There doesn't quite feel like in normal normally in the devil card, you get this feeling that you can escape at any time that you want to. There doesn't quite that feeling doesn't really come out in this card. This feels more like you're just kind of trapped forever. Part of a collection. Next we have the tower. Which is just beautiful destruction with this giant full moon, the doves flying free, and just fire and everything's collapsing. Pretty solid tower card. The star. This is gorgeous. I like this. This definitely gives me a lot of the feelings of the, the hope and the kind of like chasing something that is making you flow freely and easily and happily that the star card has a lot of times and sometimes it's hard to pull that that message out of the star card it's like in the traditional rider weight tarot I, i've struggled forever with the star card but this one has a lot more there's a lot of emotion coming through in this card which i think is so important in the star next we have the moon this is again i'm going to say it about every card but the, these artists are incredibly talented i think it's interesting that we have characters in the background and there's kind of like a bit of a ruler feeling going on here the moon card too is typically about kind of like and i guess let me be the figures in the background it's like sh this character is continuing on proudly very emotionally moving forward in spite of some of these negative maybe these are naysayers or people that are trying to take the staff bit of a conflict of emotions next we have the sun and this is just gorgeous. I love this. I love the colors and I love the art, but again, it doesn't quite strike. Like, I wouldn't know what to interpret with this, just the sun. I wouldn't know that happiness was a major thing or following bliss or your joy was, was a major part of the card unless I already knew the tarot. 
Judgment. That's a pretty cool card here. It looks like we have two characters on a battlefield of sorts with Angel of Judgment overhead. It does kind of give me the feeling that she's deciding what stays and what goes. And the final card in the Major Arcana, we have the World. This one's a little more destructive than I typically see the World card. The world, the, the Earth is actually like falling to pieces here with smoke going around it. This definitely brings a little bit more of a like the, the cycle is over and things will end now. Like this brings a lot more feelings of ending than, than I typically see in the World card. The World card is usually this very joyous and celebratory card. So... There's our major arcana for the Ostara deck. All in all, I will say that really cool, gorgeous art. I'd say about half of these cards aren't great for beginners and are difficult for intuitive readers. I find this a lot with decks that just kind of have like really cool, um, attractive characters, like really cool, fun characters. It's like, okay, they look amazing, but what do I do with this? Which is why I really like, for example, the star card, because there's movement, there's, you know, energy feeling in this, there's the color palette, there's an expression on the face. There's a lot more emotion conveyed in this rather than cool looking character. So I'd, I'd say this is a good, this is a great deck for a collection. And I think for someone who's had a bit of practice with tarot, this would be a really good deck to add to your collection um, if you already kind of understand the cards or if you're at that phase where you've you've gotten past the first bit of tarot and now you want like a cooler deck and you don't mind referencing the book multiple times for it I think this deck would work for that so we're going to go ahead and jump into the major I mean the minor arcana now um, and it looks like we're starting with the suit of wands fire elements all right, I'm going to go a little bit faster through these, but we have the Ace of Wands with the little rat here holding up a wand. Fire, burn. again, there's like a lot of fire. There's more destructive energy in this deck than I'm, I typically see. Two of Wands, and we have someone in a cage looking at a bird. There's very much like I want to be free to going with this. Three of Wands, we have a little frog that's made a fishing line out of the wands, and he's fishing for three little boats. Four of Wands. We've got three little bunny rabbits here holding wands with uh, little celebration flags. Five of Wands and we have five snakes. And this is a really cool looking card. It looks like the wands are stabbed through the snake. Six of Wands and we've got a character here and a fish. You'd ha I think that I think maybe a big thing for this for me is they're all animals, right? So we've got birds here, birds for freedom. We've got a rat, bird, frog, bunnies, snakes, fish. This one, there's a raccoon up top um, for the eight of wands, seven of wands, sorry. Seven of wands definitely gives me the feeling of choices, choices, where do I go? What do I do? And kind of a distraught by the choices. The seven of wands is great. Eight of wands, a falcon, a peregrine falcon, freedom, pr a predator bird, uh, very observant. I mean, I guess dedicated, determined, focused. I would have to understand the symbolism of the animals or the meaning of the animal, metaphor of the animals to really be able to use this deck without a book. So maybe this will be a good practice tool for me because I do want to get better at understanding and interpreting animal symbolism. Here it looks like we have a, like a bobcat or a mountain cat of some kind. Um, nine of wands, ten of wands, a whale with hands across it. And then we have the page, the knight, the queen, and the king. Page is a cute little fox. The knight, we have a character seeing, I am perceiving, on some kind of critter. I don't even know what kind of animal this is. Queen of Wands. I love this card. This card's beautiful. The lion symbolism. We have the king here, but I do, this is probably my favorite out of the whole wands set. That beautiful queen on her lion. I love like a strength card. I love the, the characters on lions, I guess. Next up, we have the suit of pentacles, it looks like cards are a little stuck together. I'm having to like pull it, but that happens a lot with holographic decks. So we have the ace or the one of pentacles with a cute little mouse. So a mouse again, there was a mouse in the second one or a rat. Two of pentacles juggling with little birds. So the birds are associated with two. We have threes here. So we have another frog, the princess and the frog. Four. So they're linking the same animals across all the suits because we have four is a rabbit again. Next we have the five which looks like a snake here. I think the five, yeah, the five was a serpent in the last one too. Six of pentacles, and we have fish again. With the mermaid and scales, very much like unbalanced. It's got the four over here and the two over there and deciding what to look at, where to put your energy. Seven, and we have raccoon again, hidden away with their little tea sets. 
eight and we have um, an owl working on and we have a lot of workers tools working to smelt these pinnacles nine and we have this luxurious cougar um, lady laying with her cougar in fields surrounded by a plethora of food. Ten of pentacles. We have octopus, octopi, little octopi babies. Happy little octopus family. <laughs> the octopus is wearing little, little glasses. <laughs> That's pretty cute. So the page wondering with a bunch of foxes. So the fox symbol symbolism for the page. Knight wondering with his bear mount wondering uphill i do like this and the two knights compared to each other the queen of pentacles this is gorgeous very nurturing very loving and then the king of pentacles that's a cool looking card and then we have it looks like cups is going to be next oh i love this ace of cups this is very cute look at this wearing little rat hats drinking together ace of cups we have the two of cups very sweet very lovely little bird scene here drinking tea out of their little acorn cups oh my god that's precious we have the three of cups i love this card that's beautiful four of cups with the bunny rabbit holding the bunny rabbit with her bunny mask five of cups we have serpent again i'm really interested to look into why they chose the animals they did for the numbers so we've got the five of cups here with a snake slithering through we've got a couple of spilled cups and a very despaired character six of cups that looks like they're all kind of sacrificing something or giving energy or worshiping this whale that's coming out of the water here seven of cups we have this dancer celebrating holding all of her cups over her head you're able to be free and joyous because there is the anonymity going on of what's happening here eight of cups and we have a contemplative we have a falcon that's landed and has human legs and is just kind of very contemplative energy nine of cups we've got a bunch of kitties resting with the character in the middle taking a moment to breathe and collect yourself and just kind of enjoy then we have the ten of cups that's beautiful the octopi again with jellyfish this is a beautiful card so we've got the page with the fox jumping out so there's energy going here very mischievous very uh jumping into something it's almost like a like a night like inspiration of the night has hit and you just want to jump on a project at three o'clock in the morning then we have the Knight of Cups, who looks very much like he is navigating his way to something new. The Queen of Cups, this is beautiful, but kind of tragic feeling. I think it might just be the color palette of this and the King of Cups, that's really cool. I love that the King is these really solid animal symbols and the Queen is typically with the animals. And then we have the final suit, which is the swords, which is typically the saddest, harshest. We have the Ace or the One of Swords with the little rat king on a corpse that's been stabbed. Off to a great start. We have the blind blue jay with the, uh, two swords tab stabbed through its nest with a road leading down. Which road will you take? And you've got to choose three of swords, three swords stabbed in a heart, carved in a tree with ivy working its way up the tree, rain falling, little frog sitting there looking up at it. We have the four of swords. This it looks like a dead rabbit to me. Am I wrong? It's feeling kind of sad five of swords feels kind of tangled and askew then we have the six of swords with the snake following this person rowing through dark treacherous waters away from swords stabbed in the ground so that's pretty solid for the six of swords seven of swords and we have this little raccoon carrying all of its little swords away from a, a circus eight of swords and we have a peregrine falcon with bloody swords rotating around it blinded and surrounded gosh i like the sim i like the imagery in this i like the feeling of it because it's you're tamed you're captive and it's not necessarily a bad thing is it but you're not you're so out of your element the peregrine falcon can't see and that's like one of its biggest tools nine of swords and we've got this panther god i like this one too this panther with all of these swords stabbing up and very much like it's been treed and it's trapped and it's ready to fight what's ever around it it's got to survive it's, i like that one and the ten of swords a whale with ten swords stabbed in it this one feels a little bit less tragic though because a whale is so big and these swords are so small that it doesn't feels like those are just like toothpicks that have been stabbed and he's gonna be fine <laughs> and then we have the page which is very cool we've got the knight here fighting in the woods with fallen bodies around him wearing the bear skin instead of a bear companion he's wearing the bear skin that's a beautiful card this might be one of my favorite cards in the deck with the heron next to her i love the colors Ooh, and the King of Swords. It's the face that's just kind of creeping me out. At first I thought it was a skeleton and then I realized that it's a mask. And that wraps up the final suit of the Minor Arcana. So my first impressions overall of this deck. 
I think it's beautiful. Um, I think that I would have to work with it several times, and I actually think that I would end up learning a lot by working with this deck. I think that this would, this isn't something I would, I would not call this deck beginner friendly by any means, but I would say that intermediate, um, and especially if you've done tarot for a long time and you're pretty solid with the symbolism of the cards, um, which is about how I feel. I don't feel like super duper expert, but I feel like I've got like a pretty solid handle on tarot. I think this would be a good deck to kind of play with, especially if you want to learn a little bit more about animals. I think that I'm going to learn, and I do have a spirit animal deck that I'd like to flip through with y'all one time. Maybe that can be our next deck that we go through. I want to, yeah, actually, because I really want to start using that deck. Actually, now that we flipped through, this has gotten pretty, pretty flexible. So I'm going to give it a riffle shuffle a try. But, oh, that actually, it doesn't do the, the bridge because the cards are a little too stiff that way, but it riffle shuffled pretty well. I'm going to try my sideways way of riffle shuffling. Sort of. I don't know. I'm really scared I'm going to mess these cards up. <laughs> really scared I'm going to break these cards or bend them. I'm just going to pull a couple of cards and see. Let's just see what we get with this. This is actually very, very um, satisfying to shuffle this deck like this, the, uh, the like this type of shuffle. I don't know what you call this type of shuffle. The throw in the cards around shuffle because the cards are just thick enough to feel like they can handle it. However, I feel like this. Oh, there we go. I feel like so we've got the seven of pentacles reversed is the first card I pulled or the card that popped out here. So let's take a look at the book. Simple pleasures, happiness, no drastic change and comfort are the focus here. OK, simple pleasures. Oh, because of the tea set. OK, happiness. I guess because they're family together. No drastic change. Staying stationary, cu cuddled up. They're snuggled safe in their den with a wealth of coins all around them. This card is all about comfort. Sometimes simple pleasures are better for they encourage happiness to be found at home. Satisfaction will be found through tried and true methods. If you're asking the deck whether you should make a change, this is a solid no. Now is not the time to flee or look for new horizons. Um, now this was reversed when we popped it out. So your perceived comfort may be an illusion. Damn, is this deck trying to roast me right now? Furthermore, it may be holding you back as you staunchly cling to your roots. Embrace change as the status quo is not as beneficial as you think. So seven of pentacles being reversed is, hey, you're, um, oh, that's so funny. Cause I was actually procrastinating a lot on recording videos tonight. It's a big theme that's been coming up a lot for me lately is like getting out of my comfort zone, stepping out of the comfort zone and, uh, trying something new, uh, pushing, pushing yourself, pushing yourself to change and evolve instead of staying comfortable in what you're doing. So I like, I like that, that card popping up. And I think that's going to echo through to the new moon and Taurus tarot reading I'm about to do, which will already be up by the time I put this video on YouTube. So, but yeah, I guess that's going to wrap it up for my tarot deck flip through of the Ostara tarot. I have not gotten the chance to use it yet, but I will say that I feel like I was, I was judging it a little harshly while flipping through it. But after pulling that seven of pentacles, looking in the book with it, I do think that even if it was my first deck, it would probably probably be a really solid one to start learning with because the book is written so nicely. The guidebook is really good and you'd get to uh, learn a lot, not just with human symbolism, but with animal symbolism throughout this. And I think that that could apply throughout other tarot decks that you get. So I do, I do think this is a really, I'm very happy that I have this deck in my collection and I'm excited to, to read with this one in the future and sort of see what we, see what we get. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching this video. Um, I hope you all have an amazing week and weekend or week, whatever time it is. Just have a good time. Have a good life. Okay, bye. <laughs>